Hi, I'm Jeremy, and I'm here here with Prajata today to talk about the Intune API. So thanks for joining me today. Hi, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. So um, what, what is Intune for those people that maybe are in the Microsoft 365 world but um, have been using the graph but weren't aware of any of these APIs? Sure. So Intune are known as DMAC in the Microsoft 365 product device management admin center is Microsoft's solution to simplify the modern workplace management. What it does, it helps to create a productive environment for a user on the devices that they choose, on the apps that they choose, while protecting their data and the corporate data. Okay, so like for instance, for me on my iPhone, I'm collecting my mail on my phone, I had to install something on that device, uh -huh. and now it's managing other things that can and can't Absolutely. be on there. Absolutely. And you can do that centrally as an administrator. Yes. That's cool. So what can we do on the graph as an API with Intune? So Intune, our DMAC user interface, is actually built completely on top of MS Graph. So everything that you can do using the web portal, you can do using Graph APIs. That's awesome. So there's no kind of like mismatch or gaps. It's nope. essentially the whole UI is available in the API. Yes. Great. And so what types of things do you see people using the API for that they don't use in the, API, uh, in the UI, in the user interface as admins? Like are there common scenarios that you see people looking into? Absolutely. So the common day-to-day -day scenario for an IT pro would be to come in and see the health of their devices, enroll in the tenant. Um, are they compliant? Are they non-compliant? If they're non-compliant, they want to take some actions. They also want to maybe migrate their policies from one tenant to the other. They want to update an LOB apps. Um, they want to install more apps, get more tokens, enroll new devices. It's a whole range from getting a devices to a tenant to its day-to-day -day life cycle. So I guess you know, there's a lot of things you can do in the UI, but it might not be the best job of someone clicking through it all the time. So you might want to automate and script these things yes. when a user comes on board a company. Yeah, especially like for large enterprises who are yeah. managing hundreds and thousands of these devices, they love automation and they love MS Graph for that. And so is this a scenario, many APIs on the graph will be you know, uh, on behalf of the user calls using I log in and I'm an admin, mm -hmm. and it's going to use my user access token to call in mm -hmm. June. Or it could be application only where there's a registered app and it's going to work as that application. Mm -hmm as a service. Yes. What typical scenarios, can you do both with Intune or is it one or the other? So in Intune today you can, you need a user login, you need a user token to do graph calls. Okay. But we are working on and hopefully in few months you can do an application login only or a userless login. Right. It's not there today, it will come hopefully in a few months. Okay, and so the benefit of the, I guess, of using a user as the first priority of the release was that you can see that it's Jeremy that's making those changes to the profile rather than an application service. Yes. So there's kind of more accountability Definitely. The process. So could you show me some stuff? I'm assuming there's some things in Graph Explorer we can do with Intune Absolutely. around these APIs. How about I walk you through the scenarios that we just talked about? Yeah, that's great. I'm here in Graph Explorer, and one of the common cases for IT pros is to come in and look at the health of their devices. So they would do this by simply running a query on manage devices and see a list of all the devices enrolled in their tenant, along with all the device attributes for each device. And so in this case, like I'm an admin, I'm signed in on the left-hand side here in Graph Explorer, and it's returning those devices because I am an admin inside of the product. Yes. So okay. as an admin, you have rights to see all the devices in the tenant. Yeah. So as an admin, this is a great list, but it's a long list. You might want to filter it based on your platform. So let's do that. We are going to filter based on operating system Android. When you run query, you see that this tenant has only two Android devices. Just the way you can filter on Android, you can quickly change it to Windows or iOS or Mac OS to see the number of Android or Windows or iOS devices in the tenant. The most common use case for IT pros is to come in and see the non-compliant devices in the tenant. So if I change my filter from operating system to compliance type, I would get the list of non-compliant devices in the tenant. I'm going to use my little cheat sheet here. So this tenant has two non-compliant devices. Ideally, you want to have as little to almost zero non-compliant devices. You want to have devices who are in sync with your compliance policies and profiles, all healthy and all in a great state. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect of device management, coming in and checking the status of the device. The other aspect would be setting up policies and profiles in your pilot tenant 
testing them out, and once you are happy, then migrating that policy into a production tenant for large-scale deployment. Let's see that scenario. So from managed devices, I'm going to go into device configurations. This is where you have a list of all policies and profiles, and it's pretty common for this list to be fairly long. So for an example, let's pick one policy, and let's move this policy from our pilot tenant to our production tenant. I'm going to change my graph explorer. This is my production graph explorer. Let's actually take a second to look at the production tenant. This is the web interface for Intune. As you can see, this production tenant has no policies at all. Mm -hmm. I'm switching back to my graph explorer for my production tenant. And so you can take that exact JSON package that was yes. returned from a get mm -hmm. and use it on the post. Use it on the post. The only thing I'm going to do is delete the ID so Graph can give me that unique ID. Right. OK, because of different tenants, it will be completely it's, different. Yes. And then I change, as you said, get to post, and then do run query. If I go into my web portal and do a refresh, there you go. In cool. a matter of seconds, the policy was copied from my pilot tenant to my production tenant. Right, so doing this via the graph is going to be a lot easier than doing that by going into 60 profiles and copying them between different. Yes, and just the way we did, we can bulk do all 60. We showed an example of one, but there's nothing stopping an IT pro to bulk copy all 60 in the JSON file and then do a post for all 60 at once. Yeah, and you could version the requests in GitHub or in Azure DevOps or something to see the changes as you're updating those profiles too, I guess. So totally. There's some really smart things you can do there with the graph. That's yeah. excellent. So would people, I mean, they wouldn't necessarily do this in Graph Explorer. So how do you see admins in the real world using this stuff? So I mean, as our admins love Graph Explorer, but they also really love using PowerShell script. It yeah. makes life, it's just what they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And so what they would do is run the same example in a PowerShell module. So this is actually my production one. Sorry, let's go back to my pilot. So this is my pilot tenant. For the first step, what they would like to do is copy all their policies from the device configurations into a variable. So now this variable has all the policies right. and profiles. So that's the same as what you ran in Graph Explorer, it's just pulled them all through. Exactly. You did a yep. get on device configurations, you did a get. It's, it's the same, Intune device configuration policies, the exact same name from the Graph API. And where is that PowerShell command? Is that part of a command lit package they can download? Yeah, so actually, let's take a minute to talk about that. So Intune PowerShell SDK is built on top of MS Graph. There is one-to-one -one mapping between an API call and the PowerShell SDK. Right. And it's, upload, it's in the Microsoft PowerShell gallery, so you can get it from there. Awesome. So you can either do an export on all the policies, or you might want to do a filter. And I want to show an example of doing a filter. So this filter is on policy type Windows 10 custom. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to export this into an policies.xml file. Let's see how many policies we have before we get. So there were three policies in this XML. Now if I switch from my pilot tenant to my production tenant, it just two simple steps. You, ex you import the XML, and then you create new device configuration policies, one, two, and three. Okay. So in few clicks, in few clicks, we had three policies migrated from a pilot environment to a production environment. That's awesome, and it's all using the Microsoft Graph. It's all using Microsoft Graph, whether it's Intune UX or whether it's Intune PowerShell. Everything starts with the graph layer. That's really cool. So there's a ton of scenarios there, and I've myself looked through the docs and seen that there's lots of things you can do with Intune. So the best place to get started is graph.microsoft.com. Um, please go check out these APIs today, and we'd love to see what you're doing with them.